Hello, guys and girls. You are listening to Total OS Today from the United States and Infinitely Galactic from Australia. This is another Toscast in a series of podcasts. Uh, I believe this is Toscast number 10. You can catch all the previous uh, podcasts on the uh, Total OS Today channel. And also, please check out the Infinitely Galactic channel here on YouTube, and you can also catch the podcasts on toscastpodcast.blogspot.com. So, before I transfer the microphone to my good friend, just a, a few quick uh, rules here about what we are going to do. We are going to do a joint comments corner. Basically, we will comment on some of your comments. Now, the comments we will pretty much pick at random. We each chose one of our favorite videos that had some of the most um, most comments. Uh, we will just go back and forth. Maybe I'll do five. He will do five. Uh, as far as the ground rules goes, no vulgar comments whatsoever. Um, it will be impossible to uh, you know comment on every single comment. There's just not enough time. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if IG wants to, this is one thing I forgot to mention before, IG. Maybe we can also mention the name if you would like to. Somebody said, hey, you said the comment. Now, please say our names. I am cool with that as long as you are. But at this time, let me transfer the microphone to my good friend in Australia, Infinitely Galactic. So probably one of the most exciting things when it comes to YouTube videos for uh, most of us is uh, getting the feedback from you guys and looking at the comments that you guys leave on our videos, uh, which does, by the way, make it very worthwhile for us being able to hear what you guys have to say. Um, now, at the same time, that often, especially with, uh, with videos where we're comparing uh, one system or a piece of software to another, there is often a fair bit of mudslinging that goes on. So. Uh, we, we are just going to pick out a few uh, either insightful or random comments that uh, that we enjoyed or maybe didn't enjoy. But yeah, as, <laughs> as Total OS Today said, we're not going to be uh, reading ones with vulgar language just to keep it family friendly. Yes. But there has been a lot of good stuff said in the comment section over the last uh, couple of months. So uh, we'll try and just gloss over the ones that uh, that we uh, that we appreciated the most. Sounds good. Uh, what do you think? Shall we read out the names also? Because someone said, please do that. I'm okay with that if you are. Yeah, we can do that. That's fine, as long as their names are pronounceable. And we're going to be terribly sorry if we mispronounce the, uh, the online ad identities of the commenters. All right. Sounds fair enough. Okay, I guess I will get started. I picked uh, the Ubuntu 11.04 versus Windows 7 video. This was done eight months ago, right after Ubuntu released the brand new, at the time, the brand new, wonderful, that everybody loves, Unity interface. It seems like this was and is a love-hate relationship. I liked it from the beginning. I still have it on my HP multimedia laptop, and the reason why I still have it, it's pretty much stable. It just flat out works. So. That being said, let me get started. I think what I'll do is just get started with maybe five, and maybe you do five and back and forth. There's no really any rules, I mean, like as far as this goes. But let me get started. Okay. This is from uh, Sean Green One. Hello, Sean. I use KDE and Genome for Ubuntu 10.10, .10, and I have to say, if you are too stupid to do something as simple as make your own convenience on the desktop GUI, you don't deserve a computer. Uh, I'm not sure I follow the comment. I think what you're trying to say is that you have options in terms of how you want to make your desktop GUI look. Uh, how do you see it? Um, yeah, from the sounds of it, uh, I'm not entirely following it, but from the sounds of it, it, uh, it sounds something like that he's saying that if you aren't going to customize the computer to the way that you want to work it, then you probably shouldn't have a computer. Okay. Is that what he's trying to say? I would have to say that's it. But that being said, moving along, uh, <laughs> Demon Spark Sparks. Spark X Sparks. Hi. Uh, let's see. Looking isn't as important either way. Ease of use and reliability comes down to the finish line major. Uh, totally 100% agree with this statement regarding any and all operating systems. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. If it's not 
I mean, it's it's not really about the gloss of it. It's not really about how it looks. If it functions for you and it functions the way, you know, the way that people would expect it to and it's reliable, that's what you want to see. Sounds good. Okay, now this one was had had a little bit of questionable words in it. I kind of left it because I got the gist of what he was trying to say, and then he kind of like apologized later. But this is from Cipher, Cipher Z, Cipher Z. I hope I'm saying it right. Hi. Okay, I've heard Ubuntu does not have problems, viruses, and the only thing I get since I started trying this piece of blank OS is problems. The driver issues alone is a blank blank. It never launched back, back after a manual driver installation attempt, which was done according to a Linux forum instructions. And when I reinstalled Ubuntu, it tried to upgrade, upgrade it. <laughs> Blank blasted all over the fan. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot boot again. Now, why would I need to solve blanket puzzles when I can run 100% more efficient when I can run Windows <laughs> more efficiently than Linux? Okay. I think I got the gist of what he was trying to say. It seems like that uh, c 4 may have downloaded a corrupted file. You should always check the MD5, always. In fact, that's what I wrote. And he wrote back, does it, does it really need a MD5 check if downloaded from the Ubuntu official site? My answer, only way to be sure. How do you see it? Yeah, it's uh, it's tough to say. I mean, in my experience, I, I, I do check the odd MD5, but uh, oftentimes I don't. But as far as... Um, you know, hardware drivers and all that kind of thing are concerned. Like on a different on a different level, um, I've never had any issues with with hardware drivers as of about 2010. Um, so I mean, that's probably just the hardware that I'm running. Um, I mean, I've I recently bought uh, just in the last month I bought a another Dell laptop to do more HD video editing. Okay. And um, and uh, and I also had a Dell laptop previous to that, and both of them have had flawless um, hardware support. That is one of the biggest things that I noticed, though, about a lot of people when they're saying, "Oh, I've just started using Linux and one thing and the next, but this hardware driver isn't isn't working the way it's supposed to, or I can't install this, or um, you know, this thing isn't working properly." And I, I mean, I wish I could do something to be able to help them, but it's just a, a real sort yeah. of hit and miss. Yes, if, uh, if it's not supported. If it's not supported with the open source drivers that are built into the kernel, which are, there are a huge amount of devices and, and hardware supported in the kernel by default, uh, then uh, it's it's kind of give and take. You're kind of up the creek without a paddle. But uh, it's yeah. it's tough to say. But as far as as far as that particular comment is concerned, I can relate to his uh, to his frustration. But um, yeah, at the same time, it's just if it doesn't really work for you, then. Yeah, it's best to just stick with what you know. But yeah, again. yeah. I mean, just to finish on that uh, comment, which is very funny when I first read it. Look, first check the MD5 file. Make sure it's it's not corrupt. You have to check it. Install it, and if it's still not right, then move on. You know, to maybe Linux Mint, Zorn, or just keep using Windows. That's okay. But I do recall some time ago downloading a Linux OS. Uh, I checked the MD5 file. It did not match, so I knew it was corrupted. But just as an experiment, I decided to see if I can boot it. It did boot fine, but it started acting weird afterwards. So there you go. Check the MD5 file. If the number, if the number sequence doesn't match, delete it. Download it again, uh, because if it is corrupt, you're in a world of hurt. All right. Let me just pick two more, and then I'll, then we'll switch here. Um, okay, this is from Music is Amazing 2000. I like that. So I just installed. So I just installed this on my computer, and I don't have to use Windows. Well, uh, I wrote back. The best answer is maybe for everyday computer tasks, it should be fine, and you don't have to worry about viruses usually. I left it at that. What do you, what, what do you say? Yeah, uh, for most for most computer computer users' needs, you know, internet, email, photos, music, that kind of thing, uh, really uh, Ubuntu and and Linux in general is a really nice option. Um, pretty much the only thing holding it back, like the only thing that keeps me, uh, you know, with a Windows install uh, on whatever computer I'm using, is just all the 
you know, all the, the professional software, like the Adobe suite um, and things like that. I mean, once, uh, re really, it's just the professional software that that, um, that keeps Windows around, in my opinion. So anybody who has, uh, who has like, uh, either expensive or high quality or um, high standard software that they have, uh, that they use on Windows for their job or for their hobby or whatever, um, they're probably, they, you know, nine times out of 10, they're probably going to want to keep that. But yeah. for everyday computing needs, um, you know, Ubuntu covers it well and truly. Okay. All right, let me do one more uh, and then we shall switch. Okay, uh, this is from Gamer Follower. The way Ubuntu looks makes me feel like I am, I am on a cell phone with its layout. I wrote back, is that good or bad? Uh, he replied, I'm not sure. I'm still debating whether or not to get it. What do you think? Um, interesting you should say that in that they are thinking of putting Unity on a mobile phone in the near future, like in the next couple of years. So, uh, I mean, I have heard a few comments in that regard that uh, uh, a lot of people were considering Unity to be like a bit of a smartphone kind of interface rather than a desktop computer. Some people like that, especially those who, um, you know, who have spent a lot of time on these devices. Like a lot of the, a lot of the young people that are growing up now, um, they don't actually know that much about computers, but they know an, aw an awful lot about, you know, smartphones, their iPhones, their Android phones. That's what they're spending all their time on. So from that point of view, it, it's going to be easier for some users. But for those who are just, you know, the, the traditional um, desktop computer users who have spent a lot of time on, you know, Windows XP or something like that, it might be a bit of a shake-up. But again, you know, if it's changed to make you more efficient, then it's worth it. Okay. All right, go ahead. Why don't you pick about five comments or so? Okay. Well, let's see. I'll have a look at the uh, at the Windows uh, Windows Seven versus uh, Zorin OS, which I just basically categorized as Linux. But uh, one of the one of the ones that has actually got a few thumbs up is that uh, I might switch to a Linux OS when Windows Eight becomes the norm. <laughs> Uh, does that mean that he believes, he or she believes Windows 8 is not going to be any good? Or maybe there may be more competition? I'm, I'm not sure. What? How do you see it? I'm kind of seeing this as, uh, I think, again, like I just said, um, Windows 8, especially the Metro interface, is looking very smartphone-y and it's looking very, you know, tablet -ish. Right. And um, I think the traditional desktop users aren't going to appreciate that much. Um, Okay. Again, all of the all of the people that have spent a lot of time on smartphones are going to click with it, you know, pretty uh, pretty soon. But uh, yeah, it's 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 really hard to say because I think Windows 8 for a lot of people they're looking at it now and they're going, I'm not going to be using that. And it's very similar to where Ubuntu was with Unity. People were saying, look, I'm not going to use that just because it you know it looks too clunky, right. it looks too much like a like a child's toy. It doesn't look like something I could get work done on. Right. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, as far as I mean, it is a good point though because there are going to be definitely there are going to be disgruntled Windows users. They they can of course keep their Windows Seven and you know they they can be completely sure. happy with that. But it will run the end of life eventually, and or people are going to start looking for alternatives. And I right. think for the for the Linux desktop side of things, you know that's that's a good thing. Okay, sounds good. Um, now let's see. Um, I've got a lot of comments, uh, especially on the on the Windows Seven and uh, and Linux one that talks about um, uh, that talks about Wine, the uh, the Windows compatibility layer. Right. And um, yeah, some of these some of these comments uh, some of these comments where it says uh, where it's talking about you know their their um, uh, the, the the strengths and the weaknesses of Wine. Yeah. And uh, one of the comments, I'm trying to find it here, but I remember it was it was top rated for a little while. But it said um, in the in the video, I, I have a quick screenshot of I think it's Call of Duty 4 running under Wine in uh, in Zorin OS, and uh, and I was screen capturing at the same time. And actually, I was quite surprised at the performance of Call of Duty 4 on uh, on on Linux. And uh, and so I showed like in the video I show this this shot of the uh, of the screen capture of Call of Duty 4. Okay. And somebody says uh, and at the same time in the video I'm narrating, uh, and you can even run your Windows app application sometimes better performing than on Windows, and I think that's something that comes from the Zorin site and they have a few statistics there to back it up. Yeah. Uh, but it was funny because one of the comments was. Uh, 
one of the comments was quoting me on what I said and then says in brackets, show Call of Duty 4 getting 15 frames a second. Uh. <laughs> and uh, and then I can't remember what, uh, somebody made a response to it and said, no, well, he's screen capturing at the same time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, well, it did actually perform pretty well, but it's a bit hard to see in the video. Well, I mean, um, this may not be a, a total fair answer when it comes to why, but honestly, if I really, really, really need to use a Windows software, I'll just boot into Windows 7 and just use it. I've messed with Wine before with somewhat sporadic success. You know, sometimes it can be perfect, sometimes no. But once again, if I really need to use a piece of Windows software, I'll just boot into Windows because I know it is going to work and there's no tweaking involved. So honestly, that's about as honest as, you know, an answer I can give you from a dual booter. So there you go. Yeah, I think I think that's pretty much sums it up. Okay. Um, one of the um, – another one here – uh, all all Linux users talk how good Linux is because, like you said, we all get paid. Want to join us and get paid as well? That was uh, <laughs> one of the comments from Video Tube Lord. It's uh, it's actually got 16 thumbs up, and I think the wow. uh, reason being was that uh, somebody had uh, had left a comment saying uh, Linux paid this guy. He didn't even talk about Windows that much, and its features. He was talking about how good Linux is. Uh, da da da. Is Linux anyway? Any uh, nothing can't beat Windows. Maybe Mac OS can, but still Windows all the way. Apart from being a little bit, uh, a, a little bit hard to understand. But anyway, yeah. And I responded, no, nobody paid me. I simply created this video to show other people alternatives to commercial software. Windows 7 is fantastic, and I still use it almost every other day. But I was wanting to show people like yourself what Linux can do for those who are looking for an explanation. I wasn't wanting to bag on Windows. In the end, like I said in the video, always use what works best for you. Uh, not what somebody else says is best for you. Peace out. And then this uh, video tube lord responds, all Linux users talk how good Linux is because, like you said, we all get paid. You want to join us and get paid as well. Right, so right. I, thought that was I think you gave a fair answer. And, uh, you know, for, for me as a dual booter, I enjoy dual booting, and I use what works. Uh, for myself, I call it as I see it, but no, was, no, no one's paying me on the side here. I do this I do this because I enjoy to, and I also do it because here in the wintertime, it's too cold to go outside and play, so I do videos. There you go. Okay, moving along. I think you can do – I think you're up for one more, and then we'll switch, I think. Yep, uh, this, this, one's quite, uh, this one's quite funny. This is posted around Christmas time. Uh, Jingle Bells, Windows Smells, OS2 Ran Away, BIOS Dies, Haiku Cries, Linux All The Way. Uh, clever, because I was an English major in college, and I would have to give that person a B plus. <laughs> I like it. What do you think? <laughs> it was cool. Yeah, well, basically, <laughs> he's, just, uh, he's just listing a few random operating systems here. Uh, OS2, BIOS. Uh, and then Haiku, and then right, <laughs> Linux right. as well. And again, it's got a it's got a number of thumbs up. That uh, not bad, that not bad. Sure. Quite nice, so. Okay, cool. All right, uh, I guess my turn. I'll pick uh, five. Okay, let's see. Oh, moving down. Let's see. This is from Mr. AJ 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 one oh five. Okay, hi. Uh, not to patronize you or any other Windows lover, but it's nice to hear what people who know nothing to very little about Linux thinks of Ubuntu. I love Ubuntu and have been using it on and off for a while, for a while, but I've just got used to Unity and love it. I just replied, uh, thank you, and, um... I think I know a little bit more about Ubuntu than maybe some novices, but yeah, I, I enjoy using Unity since the first day. And uh, and and apparently Mr. AJ, you know, repeated likes it too. So there you go. <laughs> hmm. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm just going to jump in with a quick comment here. Um, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was talking uh, – I've got a commenter here that was talking about um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Ubuntu 11.04, and he was saying that, uh, this was on my review for Ubuntu 11.10, so the next release. He said, thanks for making this video. I wasn't a big fan of 11.04, but 11.10 has won me over. And, uh, and it was interesting that there was a number of people that said that, that, that they were saying that they weren't too impressed with Ubuntu 11.04, 
And now all of a sudden they've got, uh, you know, they've tried 1110 or they've seen videos of 1110 and they're saying, oh, it's actually starting to win me back. So uh, I think that's a bit of an interesting trend because uh, I do have quite a few comments uh, going to that same sort of ring. But sorry, I kind of jumped in there and interrupted and there was a bit of awkward silence there while I was reading some <laughs> yeah, other comments. So, not a right. problem, not a problem. This is, uh, you know, we are, we are doing this podcast or this type of format for the very first time and that's fine, uh, whatever works. So um, let's see, let me scroll down here. A lot of replies. Uh, okay, this one I had to look it up because I didn't know the phrase. But this, okay, this is from Fart in the Wind 13. Uh, <laughs> I used to use Windows, but then I took an error to the knee, and I'm like, I wrote question marks, and he writes back. I guess it could be a she. I don't know. Do you know the arrow to the knee joke? No, but then I looked it up. I guess it's part of a game from the Elder Scrolls, and then I realized what he was trying to say. But uh, I used to use Windows, then I took an error to the knee. I'm assuming that this person had problems with Windows because of system errors. That's how I read it. So, Yeah, I'm not sure. I've heard the arrow to the knee joke around a fair bit, especially in the comment sections. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, uh, we've said a few times we're not real big gamers or anything, so yeah. uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's um, I'm guessing that's from a popular game of some sort. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to get comments on this video saying, oh, you guys are so ignorant and one thing and the next, but Look, oh, well, there uh, you go. Just to expand, I did do a little bit of research as, as, as not to, to appear totally dumb when it comes to games. I, I believe it's from something, a game called Skyrim. And one of the main characters says, uh, I used to be an adventurer. I guess it's set in the woods, uh, uh, you know. And I used to be an adventurer, but then I took an arrow to the knee, meaning that he couldn't complete his mission. I'm assuming that's what it's based on. But So there you go. But please don't yell at us because we are not PC gamers. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is from Joe Bira Birardis. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, this is by far the most biased video I have ever seen. Please, if you're going to compare things, try to stay unbiased. I wrote back, well, that's strange. I actually dual boot Unity with Windows. Um, I didn't really try to be biased. In fact, I thought I was kind of fair, but I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, the, the, the bias side of things is always interesting in that oftentimes, yeah, I will get comments saying, oh, you know, you're very biased towards Linux and that sort of thing. And honestly, in some areas, I think I, I really honestly feel that Linux is a better operating system. But it, it, like, and that's only in just some areas. The way that the way the system works, the way it interacts with your hardware, and all the the sort of the the technical stuff that nobody's really interested in. Yeah. But really, at the end of the day, and we keep saying this, it's just use what works well for you. And if you know, if free software and if Linux suits your needs for, and it you know it can fulfill what it is you want to use a computer for, yes. then more power to you. But uh, but if you need if you need to use uh, if you need to use software that just works on Windows better or you just function better, then do that. It's um you know, I think it's I think it's a pretty sad kind of state of affairs when you you know, when you're gonna let what other people think influence you as to, you know, how you should be yeah. uh, you know, being productive or how you should, you know, go about your everyday computing tasks. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I think I think we're allowed to be biased. We can, or you know, we and we can try and be as fair as we can. But at the end of the day, we're only going to just call it as we see it. Right. And you know, and if we see something that's better or worse right. uh, in another operating system, then we're you know we're going to call it out. Yeah, you know, perhaps maybe some of the commentators shouldn't confuse uh, favorite, some of our favorite things versus, you know, being biased. Maybe that might be, a, you know, a threshold that may be hard to balance. Out, you know. Possibly, but all right. Let me uh, let me move on to the next one here. I'll do one more, then we'll switch. Um, if Unity is better than Windows, why is there? I guess it should be why are there more Windows users than Unity? Uh, let's see. I replied. Microsoft has been around longer. Windows is generally more stable and less buggy than Linux. Assuming no viruses, Unity is not necessarily better than Windows. There is no standard desktop Linux computer for the masses yet. 
Almost all Windows software works well in Windows, but Linux software has to catch up with new Linux OS releases. And he, and he writes back, how is, Windows more, how is Windows more stable? Ubuntu has never crashed for me in my life, and this is on my five-year-old computer. Um, yeah, we had, we had talked about this uh, with Linux Mint 12. Uh, since it's new, there was even an update on the blog that it's not, it, it's, it still has bugs in it. And we also talked about the problem with a lot of Linux OSs when they're released every six months. The rest of the software or your favorite software has to catch up. And that could be you know, construed as a bug. And if you try to install it, it, it may make your brand new current updated system unstable. And you really don't get that with Microsoft. Of course, they, they don't release a new OS every six months either. But that was my take you know, on that comment. How do you see it? Yeah, again, um, I think as far as you know we've talked about release cycles of of, of uh, ubuntu in in specific as far as you know the every six month thing and um I, I mean if we were if we were to compare it to windows i mean there there were all kinds of issues when uh when vista came out as opposed to you know uh, true, true, manufacturers yes. making drivers yes um, uh, people updating their software but i think they really learned a big lesson from that and then with the open with the open public beta testing that Windows 7 went through, a lot of manufacturers were supporting Windows 7 before it actually came out. Yes. So um, yeah, I mean, I'd have to say that that doesn't it isn't really a thing that Windows 7 uh, or Windows uh, generally. I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens when Windows 8 comes around. But honestly, I don't think it's really something that Windows suffers from anymore. And I think right. it is a bit of a I think it is a bit of a Achilles heel for, for Linux as far as that's concerned, is that it is very evolutionary. Yes. And, uh, and you know, it's constantly moving forward at quite a rapid rate. So I think, uh, you know, if you want to have software that, that, uh, that you know, s sort of stands up to, you know, rigorous use over the course of a year or two years, then um, you're probably better looking at, um, you know, like uh, CentOS or the Ubuntu long-term support releases, yes, or something, something with a with a longer lifetime. Right. Yep. Sounds good. Um, why don't we switch your turn? All right. Um, I was just looking at a rather lengthy conversation here between uh, between Skillo 1983 and Magit Reaper uh, on the actually which video is this? Uh, on the Ubuntu 11.10 review, and okay. they it's actually, I mean, both of these people uh, have left quite lengthy comments, and most of them are actually pretty, it's an interesting little discussion, so I'm just going to run through this. Um, All right. I'm not sure where it starts and where it finishes, but um, okay. anyway. Uh, but basically, they're talking about, uh, you know, the GNOME desktop. Uh, so the GNOME desktop was probably the only decent desktop manager for Linux, and now the community of idiots uh, bent on destroying that too. Would you, look at, would you look at the terrible thing in this video to find an application in GNOME 2? All you had to do was click applications. Now it's click this type, uh, click this type thing, scroll down, blah, 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 ruined. And, um, and, then, uh, and then the same person makes the next comment. Linux has been around long enough to replace Windows and Mac, but that has not happened because no one uh, gives a blank about Linux. Uh, the hardware manufacturers don't generally support it which leaves you a crippled OS that relies on open source blank drivers that never work. Uh, there are probably over 30 different window managers for Linux and none of them work. None of them are worth blank. Uh, Windows and Mac have only had one and it works perfectly. If Linux was going to take over, it would have happened already. Then Magic Reaper replied to that comment saying, I wouldn't say that. DreamWorks uses Linux, Google, Google's offices use Linux and they support it. SUSE and Red Hat are used by quite a few companies and governments. My hardware runs on Linux better than Windows and then and, uh, and some then Mac. Uh, and Linux does not strive to take over, just slowly gain its ground with the other two OSs. While I agree that uh, Unity and Gnome Shell were steps in the wrong direction and that proprietary hardware support is small, the rest of your posts I don't agree with. Okay. And, uh, and then the conversation just kind of goes back and forth um, between you know the driver support and the rest of that. But I yeah. think that, that comment that Magic Reaper made was um you know was a fairly uh, well summarized comment yeah yeah it's 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 it sounds a bit harsh in parts of it but uh, there are some valid points i mean if if you have a brand new linux os uh, system that you downloaded you know whether it's linux mint or ubuntu and and the drivers aren't there yet i mean who do you blame uh, 
you know, do you blame the Linux side or the hardware vendor side? It's, uh, you know, it's 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 almost like I see Linux as a as a continual work in progress to my, to try and make the, as perfect an operating system as possible. But really, that's probably only going to happen when uh, when a PC maker, whether it be you know, and I'm just making this up, whether it be HP or whatever, and I think Dell uh, ships with Ubuntu if you request it. That's the only way you're going to get. And out of the box, 100% working experience because the hardware and the drivers matches the operating system. So, and until that is available on a mass market, uh, you know, type of mentality, it's going to be an experiment in progress. I mean, for myself, I've, I've been pretty lucky. Of course, I don't, you know, uh, install every single type of Linux uh, system out there. I you know I usually stick you know with the, you know with Ubuntu Zorn Linux Mint and its offshoots and I've had pretty good luck because it it can be time consuming as the one commentator said at the, at the uh, top of the podcast, you know, why should I spend all these hours trying to you know trying to figure out this freaking puzzle. But valid points if harsh, but uh, yeah, I I I I can understand that. So yeah, I think it's it's an interesting side of things from the point of view that as far as you know, the, the way drivers get developed into the kernel are, are simply that a particular company or hardware manufacturer or whatever, they have something to gain by using Linux as a software just from the benefits that it has. So for instance, like DreamWorks or Google or any of those companies, because of the fact they have developers that are willing to invest time into making it work better for them, yeah. then you know, the open source community gets to benefit from that, and that's where we get most of, you know, the work for the kernel. Then, of course, there are dedicated, you know, people sure. that are working on the kernel and building uh, driver Absolutely. functionality. But, Absolutely. yeah, I, I think, you know, there there's stuff to be gained there, but I think at the same time it is going to be a bit of a weakness for it as there is, you know, not a whole lot of, uh, of commercial uh, gain to be, uh, to be had from expanding it. So. Okay, 